With football season upon us now, there's a lot happening in the news. So be sure to subscribe to my other channel, JG9 News, where I give you up-to-the-minute updates on everything happening in the NFL in a completely relaxed, unscripted format. And I get my thoughts on everything taking place around the National Football League today. And now, on with our feature presentation. September 7, 2024. It's week two of the college football season, and we find ourselves in State College for this non-conference battle between Bowling Green and Penn State. For the main team in our story, the Nittany Lions, this scheme should be a walk in the park on paper. It should be an absolute cakewalk. After Penn State opened up the season on the road with a dominant victory over West Virginia, where it seemed as though the only thing that could stop the Nittany Lions was the weather that delayed the game by two hours, they get to play in front of their home fans for the first time all season in a guaranteed game. When Penn State and Bowling Green signed the contract to play each other back in 2017, it was reported that Penn State was paying Bowling Green a whopping $1.5 million. And when you combine that with the fact that the spread for this game was Penn State by 34 and a half points, with Penn State being roughly a five touchdown favorite to win, yeah, that's the kind of game I think everyone expected here, and understandably so. And with all of that in mind, you would think that there's no way whatsoever that this game will be close, right? Bowling Green's just gonna come into Happy Valley in Penn State's home opener, collect their seven-figure paycheck for doing so, and get absolutely smoked against the number eight team in the country, right? Well, that could not have been further from the truth, because in a shocking outcome, after Bowling Green scored on each of their first three drives and had three touchdowns in their first five drives, the Falcons found themselves up on the Nittany Lions 24-17 near the end of the first half, and what would have easily been the biggest upset of the season, and one of the biggest upsets in college football in quite some time. Still, there's plenty of time left, and Penn State has the football, faced with third down at Bowling Green's 9-yard line. The Nittany Lions have a timeout at their disposal if they need to use it for some reason, but you hope it doesn't get to that point. On third and seven, Penn State ends up losing two yards after getting a sack, and they move back from the 9-yard line to the 11 yard line. Well, that's unfortunate and that sinks, but at least you're likely gonna be able to get three points out of this and at least the clock is still running. So Bowling Green can't touch the ball again. Just wait a few seconds, call your timeout with four or five on the game clock and go into the half, hopefully down by four. Just wait a few seconds, don't call the timeout immediately and you, uh, you, you, you call the timeout right away? You call the timeout right away? But why? Why would you do that? Why would you call it right away and get Bowling Green the ball back? Why would you potentially give the Falcons a chance to do something and touch it? James Franklin, have you lost your mind? Did Keegan Michael Key tell you to do this for a skin of some kind? What is the purpose of this? Why did you call the timeout so quickly? Why did you call the timeout so quickly? <laughs> Welcome to Dumb Decisions. Before I break down what happened here, this whole series is about taking an in-depth look at decisions made during games that were clearly awful from the start. This isn't something to look bad in hindsight. Rather, this is something to look awful almost immediately. These are moves where a gut instinct tells you right away that there is no way this could possibly work. And sure enough, your gut instinct was smarter than that of a college head coach. And for this one, we're taking a look at the mind of Penn State head coach James Franklin. I feel as though the relationship that Penn State fans have with Franklin is very complicated. On one hand, yes, he does win games. Penn State is consistently finishing ranked and inside the top 10. On the other hand, he hasn't quite gotten the Nittany Lions over the hump, and a lot of that has to do with some absolutely baffling in-game management decisions on his end. Nothing's going to top that 4th and 5 run against Ohio State after calling a timeout. That will forever be one of the stupidest things I've ever seen a coach do. And this decision right here was pretty freaking stupid. Did it end up mattering? No, as Penn State, by the skin of their teeth, survived the guarantee game and got the win. But it doesn't change the fact that this was still a dumb call. If I need to get an 80 on a multiple choice test to pass the class, and I intentionally leave one of the answers blank, even though time was not an issue, and there's no penalty for guessing wrong, even if I passed the class, it doesn't change the fact that leaving that blank was a really stupid move that could have backfired on me. And that was the case 
with whatever the heck James Franklin did with that timeout at 14 seconds. So with that being said, let's take a look at why calling a timeout on fourth down with 14 seconds left is a really bad idea. In a fourth and goal situation where you're kicking the field goal, you know that your fourth down play is going to be the last play of the drive. With that in mind, let's look at the two scenarios at hand. Option one is you do what I would have done in this spot and what anyone with a working brain would have done in this spot, and that is to take the timeout at four seconds left. Now, one of two things can happen. In the first scenario, you make the field goal, and that's great. You get three points before the half, you only find yourself trailing by four, and Bowling Green doesn't touch the ball for the remainder of the half. In the second scenario, you miss the field goal, and that sinks, especially because it was a relatively close kick. However, Bowling Green doesn't touch the ball for the remainder of the half. Even if the kick gets blocked, unless Bowling Green takes it to the house, they're not touching the ball on a play from scrimmage the rest of the way. Either way, no matter what happens, whether you make the field goal or you miss it, by calling the timeout at 4 seconds, you assure yourselves that this will be the last play of the half, and you guarantee the fact that the Falcons will not touch the ball again. If you want an example of that, look at the Tennessee NC State game, where Tennessee played that perfectly, by laying the clock run down after a third down loss to bring up fourth down where they took the timeout very late and that field goal was the final play of the half. That was beautifully done. What James Franklin did here was not because let's look at what James Franklin decided to do here by pulling the timeout with 14 seconds left. A field goal is only going to take four or five seconds off the clock. So let's say you make the field goal. All right, that's good that you're down by four, but guess what? There's still 10 seconds left in the half, so you still have to give it back to Bowling Green. Now, in all likelihood, the kickoff is going to go for a touchback, and then the Falcons will just take a knee at their own 25-yard line and go into the half with the lead. But there's a chance that this doesn't happen. There's a chance that the kickoff is not a good one and winds up going out of bounds. And now, the Falcons have a timeout and the ball at the 40-yard line and have time to run one or two plays before kicking a field goal or they have a chance at a Hail Mary. There is a chance that the kickoff is short, and the coverage fails, and it goes for a long return, or even a touchdown. There is the chance on the kickoff that one of your guys gets injured on a play that never should have happened in the first place. Bottom line, if you make the field goal in the first scenario, where you took the timeout at 4 seconds, there was a 100% chance that this would have been the last play of the half. If you make the field goal in this scenario, Bowling Green could still do something with the ball. They have a chance. I'm not saying it'll happen, but why take that chance if you don't have to? And then, of course, if you miss the field goal because the kick gets blocked, Bowling Green might still have time to run a play on offense with decent field position and a Hail Mary opportunity, something that they would not have been able to do with better timeout management on your end. It's a basic idea and understanding of taking chances. You take chances in life because you have to. Why take a chance when you don't have to? As an example, let's say you need to be somewhere by 1 o'clock. It's 12.40, and you're on a pretty empty road and at a stoplight, which is red. And all you have to do is get past the stoplight, and it's an immediate turn into the parking lot. We're talking it's maybe 100 feet from the light to the parking lot. Whether you're there at 12.45 or 12.59 does not matter. You just have to be in the building by 1 o'clock. Option one is to wait for the stoplight to turn green and then go and get into the lot. Option two is to just ignore the red and go. Is it likely that you get hit by a car since it's an empty road? Is it likely that there is an undercover cop somewhere who's going to pull you over because you ran the red? Probably not. But again, why take that chance? There's no reason to do so. Make the field will be the final play of the half. No questions asked and make it so that Bowling Green has zero opportunity to call a play from scrimmage or get good field position. Don't do, well, whatever the heck this was, where you call the timeout for no reason to give it back to the other team. If you like the NFL, it's sort of what happened last year in a Thursday night football game between the Denver Broncos and the Kansas City Chiefs. Remember that one? After the Broncos got sacked and got fourth down with 15 seconds left in the half, the Broncos inexplicably decides to call a timeout, giving Kansas City the ball back for no reason whatsoever. There was no reason for Sean Payton to call a timeout 
and give the Chiefs an extra possession. But he did, and it backfired on him miserably. You can learn more about that by clicking the card in the upper right corner. Obviously, when it came to the man you've been watching this whole time, James Franklin, this didn't backfire on him at the end of the day. Bowling Green got the ball back on the kickoff on a touchback, and they just took a knee to go into the half. So, this was no harm done. But still, there was no need for that to happen. You whisked a massive kickoff return for no reason. You whisked a kickoff out of bounds and good starting field position for no reason. You risked a field goal getting blocked and returned, and the opposition had a good starting field position for a Hail Mary or a long field of their own for no reason. Bottom line, you win the game by scoring points, and you score points by having possessions. So if you're giving the other team an extra possession, when you literally do not have to, then it's a bad move. Point blank, it's a bad move. So what do we learn from all this? If you have two options, and one of them is guaranteed to not give the ball back to the opposing team, while the other is guaranteed to do that, then pick the option that is guaranteed to not give the ball back. If you have two options, and one of them ensures the fact that the other team cannot do anything, and you're touching the ball last, while the other one ensures the fact that the other team will touch the ball last with a chance to do something, then pick the option that is guaranteed to make sure that you're touching it last. If your play is guaranteed to be the final play of a drive, and your play can take the clock all the way down to triple zeros at the end of the half or the end of the game, then you might as well take it all the way down and not leave anything to chance when you do not have to. And if you do not know how and when to call timeouts and how possessions work, which is a very fundamental thing in football, then you're probably not getting your team over the hump anytime soon. Because when all these elements are in play, you can't exactly be surprised when this play backfires. Talk about a dumb decision. Get your official Jaguar Gear 9 merchandise by going to jj9shop.com and be sure to like and subscribe as it really helps the channel out a lot. Join me every Wednesday night where we'll play NFL trivia for cash prizes at 9 p.m. Eastern over on Twitch. To learn more about the history of college football, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 8. To learn more about the history of Major League Baseball, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 7. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping out the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. See how you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.